This is a teardown of a Cisco WS-C4500X-16SFP plus switch. This has uh, 16 SFP plus ports in the front plus an expansion bay. Not worth selling though, other than the parts, so tearing it down. And I did partially tear this down just for the sake of time. Um, otherwise it would take even longer. I think if you've seen one power supply, you've seen them all, so, yeah. <laughs> Apparently there's a couple flies in this switch, which is awesome. They're dead, but, yeah. Not too uncommon, somehow, to see dead flies in networking switches. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but these just aren't worth worth selling. Um, I think they're like $120 each is what they're worth, assuming they actually sell. And then you have to ship them. And, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just not worth it. I think I would have made like $50, $60 if they ever sold. And I thought about keeping them. I had five of these, using one as my uh, main switch for 10 gig, but it just, uh, it's too noisy. I didn't want to listen to it. Dang it. I'd say running. Um, these switches are probably as loud as a R720 and our load. They are not quiet by any means. And we'll go to 1x zoom so I can actually focus on stuff. These do have nice chip coverage. If the board weighs two pounds, I'll probably get about eight dollars from it. Um, plus, I'm selling like the fans and the power supplies and the uh, rack gears and um, the the um, storage flash for the boot image. It's a weird riser board for the uh, fan modules and the little card edge connectors. Not sure why they did that instead of just putting it on the PCB because it protrudes beyond. So I don't know why they kind of just extended it. Looks like there is some intelligence on this board though. I don't know if that's power management or LED controllers or what. And this orientation lets you see what the chip says. So that's interesting. These do have four gig sticks of memory. I don't know what kind of memory they are. I'd have to Google it, but uh, it's an unfortunate shadow right here. <laughs> There's a light right above. This isn't my normal recording spot. So yeah, I don't know what these four gig sticks are, but they're kind of worthless because they're not a standard form factor. It's kind of weird, but it's not uncommon for these weird, like, mini dims. I'm guessing it's just because it's hard to get SODEMs um, that are registered ECC. This, I think, this might just be regular ECC. There's uh, nine chips on each side, and there's no uh, controller chips, so it's just regular ECC, it looks like. Alrighty. Oops. I believe these little flash modules are USB based. But I don't know for certain. I've never looked up the chips on them. Uh, and this is what it boots off of. And you got Toshiba flash chip on there. I'm just going to turn the flashlight on the phone. There we go. 
<laughs> so, yeah, these are fairly common in the Cisco stuff. Uh, at least they're higher end stuff with flash modules like that. Otherwise, they normally solder it to the board. But I'm guessing this this uh, would have been really expensive 10 years ago when it came out. And uh, more of a budget to make something that uh, is serviceable. This little riser module for the uh, SD card. Do need to tip this on the side real quick. Grab two screws. It's a shame, but yeah, it's just it's too noisy, and uh, people aren't willing to pay enough for them. So, yeah, looks like some moisture damage on this one. Oh well. Well, good thing this one's getting recycled. That's all liquid damage. Just throw that in the floor out of the way. And there's some damage to the PCB, so. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad looking. Um, whether or not this one actually booted or not, I don't know. But, uh, I dodged a bullet there. And I think what I'm going to do next is pop all the heat sinks off. Ouch. Sharp edges. <laughs> Some of these I can take off by hand, but I'm going to have to flip this over and remove the, uh, push pans for the others. Since I'm in my office and not the warehouse, I have to do it the nice way. Because I don't want stuff flying everywhere. And definitely anytime you're working with these push pans, you want to be wearing safety glasses because the springs they use are very strong. There we go. This is not normally how I, whoops, that one went flying. Ah, oh, I normally would do this. Normally just uh, shove a screwdriver under there and just rip them off the heat sinks. But the uh, bits and pieces go flying everywhere in the process. Not that they're not already doing that. Oh, nuts. And lost a spring. Um, I'll get that later. <laughs> yeah, before the dang cats find it. Yeah, that's gonna make a mess. Oh well. For science. snapping sound you hear it isn't from me cutting through this it's from the uh, push pin the, the spring on the push pin that is shooting through the bottom all right let's see here I think this last one is still stuck on and these are really strong springs Changing my approach. Trying not to lose a million pieces everywhere.
All right. So, what's this? Some weird thermal transfer pads or something. I don't know what that's about. I think they're right there. If memory serves correct. Oh, no, probably isolation, like insulation from uh, heat sinks. I think I'm probably going to want to grab something to do some wiping with. Might have something nearby. Just wiping the thermal compound off real quick. Making a mess everywhere. And this thing is covered in fancy chips. We got some Broadcom chips here. Do the big one first. BCM E three seven one B two K F S B G. And a little itty bitty one, which I'm not going to be able to read, because it's too tiny. Be easier to read on the computer, so. <laughs> Got some DC voltage regulation going on here. On their own fancy custom boards. And lots of capacitors. And we got two big chips that I'm guessing are the brains for this switch. Maybe at least on the switching side of things. Can't clean that off good enough, but... Um, don't know what they are. <laughs> we got some NetLogic chips. NL7128YGGLC. I'm guessing that might be like a switching chip for the expansion slot since proximity and everything. Got a Spartan 6. And, oh. Nope, that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> Alright. PLX chip. Understanding is Broadcom on those, and that's why we need PCI Express bifurcation. Because Broadcom sucks. <laughs> I don't think they're ever going to sponsor me, so I don't have much to worry about. Uh, there's Xilinx Spartan X3S 1400A. And Xilinx Kinetic 7. Never seen one of these before. These are the Vertex. And more uh, DC power regulation stuff. Can you tell what that brand is? Murata. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. Let me see Look at these. Rini sauce. I forget what they make. The name's familiar. I think these are switching chips for networking. I'm no expert by any means. I've just looked at enough stuff and watched enough stuff. Occasionally I remember things. <laughs> but on the bottom side of the board, it's all just passes. Bypass caps out the wazoo. <laughs> be kind of cool if the person had like a little microscope they could fly in, <laughs> like a um, quadcopter, do a little fly through through all these little chips. But uh, yeah, always interesting. And this board is very heavily populated, but. Uh, yeah, that's all there is to see there. It's unfortunate, but it's an old 10 gig switch that's noisy that nobody wants to buy, so it makes more sense just to part it out, unfortunately. But hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.